Graham Young is Executive Director of the Australian Institute for Progress and Chris Decker works for the Red Union. Welcome to you both. Chris, what is Labor aiming to achieve with a policy like this? Um, ultimately, I, you know, I, I don't... I, I think Queensland Labor is ultimately just trying to be uh, complacent and take the path of least resistance when it comes to negotiating with these unions. Um, with the best practice uh, industry conditions, uh, you know, I don't for a second blame the CFMEU for, for taking up uh, such an offer. I mean, it, it's good work if you can get it, and I, I think they've done a good job of representing their members. But ultimately, uh, this approach of just requiring all contractors uh, to have... Uh, uh, not only uh, conditions that are almost identical to the, the CFMEU's preferred agreement, um, but requiring their subcontractors to do it, is not only costing Queenslanders and, as you've said, Amanda, Australians, uh, when it comes to the Olympics, it's also going to be costing local communities who now have to, uh, you know, when they're hiring contractors and, and builders for their own projects, uh, have to compete in a market where it has been... Uh, artificially inflated in terms of costs uh, because there's so many government projects going around that now require uh, such high, uh, high wages and conditions. Yeah, that's a good point. Graham, how does this policy and other ones like it stifle the economy of our state? Well, Amanda, there's only so much money to go around uh, and there's only so many men and resources and and um, so what happens is it sucks things, as Chris was saying, uh, into a particular sector of the economy, which isn't necessarily particularly productive. Uh, the cost of everything goes up. Uh, with the Olympic Games, you know, we have a housing crisis. Uh, there's only so much steel, there's only so much concrete, there's only so many people that can actually lay those things down, turn them into buildings, and building an Olympic stadium is very similar to building a house or building a block of units. So those people who are sleeping out on their cars because they literally can't rent, because not because they're a bad credit risk, but because there just isn't enough housing supply, they're suffering because of these sorts of policies. And it's not just, you know, the deals with the CFMEU. They also have things like uh, preference for local um, uh, supply. Uh, the New Zealanders, you might recall, got upset about that. But uh, <laughs> if you were a, a manufacturer in Grafton, uh, competing against someone in Coolangatta, you might well be upset about it, and you're in the same community as the uh, as the uh, as the other manufacturer. So there's a lot of nonsense going on there, and I think part of the problem is they're not good at managing, and you can mm -hmm. see that in the uh, Olympics. But I think another part of the problem is that the ALP is owned, lock, stock, and barrel by the union movement. When you read maiden speeches of people once they're elected, uh, they always refer to this union or that union, which has given them support. And it doesn't just affect uh, building, it also affects hospitals, as you were going close to uh, talking about in the previous interview. Uh, it uh, affects education uh, all the way down the, um, the um, uh, queue because what they're effectively doing is ceding control to various unions over how things are doing instead of uh, managing it, and that's bad government.